And it's time to discuss that with our dual threat analyst, national champion quarterback Blaine Fowler is back on BYU Sports Nation. Blaine, you've had roughly an hour and a half to digest this BYU football schedule, so let's just go to the opposite ends. What do you like most and what do you like least about this Big 12 schedule for BYU? I, I like the timing of the buys. Um, that's probably what I like most about it. You know, when, when I was on the show, oh, a month or so ago, and we, we, we kind of knew who the teams were, but not the not the schedule and how it would lay out. Um, we said, would it would be nice to get five games under their belt and have a rest. And we thought, wouldn't it be perfect if it was conference weekend, which they got, right? Um, and I like that. I feel like they're playing two of the best teams in the league, in my opinion, coming back after the bye. So not only the timing, but who they play afterward. Arizona with Fafita coming back at quarterback. I realize Jed Fish, the head coach, has gone to Washington, but a tremendous respect for Brent Brennan, uh, who came from San Jose State. He knows that program at Arizona. He was a GA down there when Dick Tomey was there. I don't know that Arizona's going to have a drop-off just because the coach has changed. And so I think they're one of the favorites in the league, and BYU gets them after a bye. And then Utah who is a huge game and always good and going to be good again next year, especially if Cam Rising's back and healthy. That comes after the other bye. Um, so they go on the road. The only thing that could have been better for BYU is if Utah did not also have a bye on that same yeah. week. It's interesting that Utah's bye weeks match up exactly with BYU's bye weeks. But but so the thing that jumps out at me is I, I like where the byes fall. And I like that what I would consider two of the most difficult games on the schedule come immediately following those bye weeks, allowing you to have a couple of weeks to prepare for those teams. So that's that's what I like best. The league has done a nice job of not giving BYU too many at home in a row or too many on the road. You, but you only have one homestand of two games in a row, and then you have right. two two games on the road. What do you think of that kind of balance of, hey, mo most of the time you're, you're hitting the road within two weeks? Yeah, I, I think they did a pretty good job of that. And I also like, Jeremy, you and I were talking about this last night. Um, if you're going to go to Arizona State, can you go late yeah. in the year so yeah. it's not 107 degrees? And so <laughs> I think November at Arizona State is a good thing. Central Florida should start to cool off a little bit by, by the 26th of October, sure. right? Sure. So, so there's two road games in what we would consider um, climates that you would have to adapt to if you went early in the season shouldn't be a factor um, and so I, I like that as well I like that there's I like the setup of away versus home I like where the buys fall I like that the that the hot climate road games are are later in the year um, I also like that a warm weather school comes to BYU at the end of the year on November 30th in Houston um, that you know I think that bodes well uh, for, for BYU um, you know I, I don't like that Utah's on the ninth, I know that when you were going to break, Spencer, you said, let's see if Blaine likes that. I wanted Utah the 30th okay. of November. I think we all wanted it on the 30th of November just to cap the season. It, it's not devastating to me. I'm not going to sulk about it. But but I but I do I do think that it would be fun to have that Utah game that, where if they tried to schedule a Thanksgiving weekend to have a cap to the season every year, the big rivalry game. Outside of that, I, I actually really like the schedule. And you know, who they don't play is interesting, too. And we knew that a while ago, but no West Virginia, no Iowa State, who I think is going to be really good next year. And I think you, you, arguably the most physical team in the league and a big challenge for BYU. They don't have them in the schedule. That crazy offense of Texas Tech is not on the schedule. No TCU again. We're not going to see Deion Sanders come into Provo or go over there. Uh -huh. And then no Cincinnati. So who's not on the schedule is also interesting. Um, and and I, I, I'm okay with them not having to play Iowa State, and I think West Virginia is a team on the rise, so I'm, I'm okay with not playing those. Blaine Fowler is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Jeremy and I were discussing BYU's path to six wins because this is where we go. BYU won five games a year ago. Progression is naturally getting to a bowl game and getting to that sixth win, and we kind of collectively feel like the Cougars need to be three and one through the first four to feel good about getting to six wins. Is that too lofty of an expectation, given that BYU is going to take on a couple of tough road opponents in SMU and Wyoming and then come home to what we think should be another solid Kansas State team? Is 3-1 and one too lofty of an expectation there? I don't think it's too lofty. I don't – by the way, I don't love that they play at SMU and at Wyoming in non-conference. I don't think any of us love that, right? Um, so, so it is what it is. That's the schedule. Tom honored those contracts. Tom Homo 
So I respect that. I wish that that wasn't the case because SMU is a really good football team. They got that that stadium is really fun. If you're down in Texas, you're traveling. It's, it's like a little bowl that they fill up. Um, it's on campus there in Highland Park. It's a great environment, but that's not an easy game. And at Wyoming is never easy. However, having said that, I think BYU's defense takes a monster step forward this year to be one of the elite defenses. And based on who's coming back and some of the pieces they added already with the early signing day and with the transfer portal, they were lacking some monsters up front. They're, they've got them. And, and with Ben Bywater announcing that he's coming back, um, and the linebacking core they have, the secondary is really solid. I think this is one of the elite defenses in the league next year. And for that reason, I think they can weather going on the road to SMU and Wyoming and get both of those along with that Southern Illinois. I think they start out 3-0. and Then then Kansas State comes to town. Quarterback Avery Johnson is back. They do have to rebuild that offensive line at K-State. So that will be interesting because they were really good. Um, along with Iowa State, I think Kansas State, one of the most physical teams in the league. So, so that's a big challenge. And then BYU's won at Baylor before. I, I look at what can they be going into the bye. I say they're three and two at worst going into the bye, and they're possibly four and one going into the bye. And I think that's a nice start for them. At worst, I like it. Uh, let's go. I was going to say, name the, uh, you started to name the six games at least that you think wins on this schedule. So Southern Illinois, SMU, Wyoming, Kansas State's a 50 50 game for me. I think Baylor's Baylor's a win game for me. Arizona, tough one. Uh, Oklahoma State. Remember, Oklahoma State's got Ollie Gordon back, and then Alan and Alan Bowman got uh, Bowman got a I don't know is this his ninth year that he gets to come back? <laughs> Kevin Rising and uh, Alan Bowman seven years. Yep. Yeah. So so they get. I mean, he, Alan Bowman makes Spencer Johnson look like a youngin, right? <laughs> so so Oklahoma State. Those are tough. Arizona, Oklahoma State. Um, at Central Florida, they're going to have a new quarterback, K.J. Jefferson, transferred in um, from Arkansas. So they'll see him again. How many times are they going to see that guy, Man, right? Good um, gosh. So, but, but I like their chances against Central Florida. So count Central Florida. Utah's a 50-50 game, no matter how good Utah is or how good BYU is on any given year. Kansas coming to Provo is another 50-50 one with Jalen Daniels back. Um, Jeff Grimes is the new OC. He's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder. But I think they beat Arizona State on the road, and they beat Houston at home. So count Houston, Arizona State as wins. Um, I think they get Central Florida. Count Baylor, Wyoming, SMU, and Southern Illinois as a win. And that's six, seven that I'm saying right there. Those are the ones I expect them to win. And then there's a bunch of 50-50 games in there. So if they end up 8-4 and four this year, I'm not surprised. They could, they could even be 9-3. and three. I would be I would be disappointed with six and six this year. Okay. If they're not at least if they're not at least seven and five, um, I, I think they will have underachieved based on what I know they have coming back on defense. Seven and five. Okay. So run the ball a little bit and let's go. So you, you again, just to reiterate, you feel like it would be if BYU won six games. There's six and five, or let's say five and six going to the Houston game, they get to six and six. That's an underachievement. Now, Blaine, you've chronicled why you feel so good about the defense. What's BYU bringing back on offense that makes you feel like the offense can do enough to win seven games? I actually like who they who they're bringing back on the offensive line, and and I realize you know that they they they've lost a potential first round draft pick at left tackle and and uh, Sua Mataia, um, but I like the raw talent they have there and the energy I felt already just in the off season with that group with TJ as the new head coach and what what they're doing, and with his play calling experience. And then, and then you bring also a tight ends coach that's been in the NFL and has play calling experience. I, I feel like that those groups upgrade this year offensively. Um, and then the wide receiving core coming back is is very very good. It's as deep and as good as almost anybody in the league. We know that Martin's back at running back. We know that Miles Davis is back at running. Like I feel like the running back room is is deep enough as well. So what's the big question, right? Why am I not just giddy about offensively? Quarterback. Because if you don't know for sure that the quarterback's great, you don't know for sure the offense is going to be good, right? So so that's my question mark, and we don't know who that's going to be. That's why it's so important that they're really good on defense, especially early in the year. So so that's my only hesitation. Uh, you know, is it one of the transfers? Does Bohannon come in and play like he did at Baylor when they won the league? Um, I mean, if he can do that, that then I'm not surprised with eight wins, right? Sure. Or even nine. 
Um, to me, that's the big question mark going in. I feel like they're deep enough and good enough at every position on the field. I think they're going to be lights out on defense. Can they settle in on a quarterback that can be really effective and not necessarily go win games, but but make sure they don't lose games? In that scenario, I'm not blown away if they win eight games. Great stuff, Blaine. Always good to catch up with you. And uh, I think we're with you. Good quarterback play means BYU can win seven or eight games. Mediocre quarterback play, maybe it's six and six, just like the schedule would say. Mediocrity right there. Okay, we'll right. do it again soon, brother. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys.